All right, guys, today, this is Hank, by the way. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. Now, what I'm going to talk about is war in the South China Sea and how it can be won if the United States decides to fight that war. Why, of all the wars that they're trying to push us towards, this may be the only one that actually makes even a little bit of sense. Now, we know that the Chinese have been building artificial reefs. They essentially pump a bunch of sand, undersea sand, into a big pile and create an island, which is essentially an unsinkable aircraft carrier in which they are going to project air power all throughout the South China Sea, which threatens the shipping of our Asian allies, whether they're um, Vietnam, India, Pakistan, um, Australia, um, any of the Indonesian areas, Viet, uh, Vietnam, if I haven't already mentioned that, Korea. The Chinese don't have a lot of friends, um, n especially not overland. They have long-standing conflicts with India, with Pakistan, with Vietnam, with Korea, North Korea. Uh, North Korea is becoming more and more of a problem for the Chinese. And um, if we're going to win a war in the South China Sea, it's not going to be done in the conventional sense. And I propose that we actually deploy our carriers in a different way. Okay, here's the numbers. Well, first here's my strategy and then I give you the numbers. The strategy is to take our submarine fleet and deploy it and use it to sink merchant shipping, sink all Chinese merchant vessels. Now that's pretty shitty, it's underhanded, but it's war. And the British did it. They um, essentially blockaded the Chinese and they took the capital of China, uh, Taiwan, which now is essentially more European than Chinese. They have a different dialect and everything. They took their, the, the English had better sailing ships, better cannon, and they used it to destroy the uh, Chinese Navy, which was far inferior. And they controlled all the merchant sh shipping. For the Chinese to be able to deliver any goods without using boats requires them to use the age-old Silk Road. And China has very specific uh, geographical borders for a reason. Those geographical borders are very uh, difficult terrain. Uh, the deserts to the north, uh, in Russia, uh, to the east, mountains, um, further to, or uh, excuse me, to the, to the west, rather, uh, mountains, uh, to the southwest, uh, India and Pakistan, mountains, desert, um, so Tibet, none of these uh, countries are very happy with China. And they won't be able to extend any military power over those borders because those countries, for the most part, are nuclear armed as well, and they have enough reach to be able to uh, nuke targets inside of China. So the United States can't win a land war in Asia. It's uh, be a foolish proposition. So what we do is we deploy our submarine fleet forward and attack all the merchant shipping, which will force the Chinese to capitulate. They can't catch up with the submarines that we already have um, ready to be deployed that are actually in active service right now. Um, you know, traditional naval warfare would say, you know, move your carriers forward, um, engage in air-to-air um, -air combat, um, and bomb the targets in the, you know, on the reefs and, and take the reefs. The reefs are, t are strongholds, and it's not necessary because uh, you can strangle them. If the Chinese aren't able to get the components and materials they need 
to continue to upgrade their uh, submarine fleets and their anti-submarine uh, warfare tactics have never been tested in the way that the United States uh, have tested their um, their anti-submarine, counter-submarine um, tactics. And the American submarine fleet is very good. There's no doubt about that. If there's one um, branch of the United States military that's not very often discussed, and that's for a very good reason, it's our uh, submarine capability. So let's just take a look at um, what the Chinese have right now as far as what their uh, submarine capabilities are. They have uh, two classes of ballistic missile submarines with a further class under development. They have um, the uh, Type 96 um, that's in development. They have a uh, Type 94, which is Jin class. There's four in active service, one more to be commissioned. Uh, the Type 92, um, one in service. So right now, even if we were to call it uh, and, and give it a liberal estimate, um, they've got, let's, let's call it seven, because let's just assume there's something we don't know about out there, nuclear-powered submarines. Okay, they got the uh, Type 95, 93, 91. Uh, one completed to enter service, unknown, planned. Uh, the Type 93, two in active service, four more to enter service. Type 91, three in active service. Um, they've got some attack submarines. Uh, 15 in active service, five more under constructions of the 39As. The 39, uh, 13 in active service. The Kilo class, they've got 12 in active service. And the Type 35s, they've got 16 in active service, and all this is ripped off from American um, technology. Uh, the Kilo class right straight out of our textbook, because thanks to uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, they sold that technology to the Chinese. And what little was left, uh, back doors were open all over the place for them to be able to copy our designs. Now, they don't have... A, I suspect, I can't say with any uh, definitive, uh, I can't say with any specific, any, any specific definitive way, but I suspect that they just don't have a, a very good grasp on um, the engine designs or um, and certainly not the tactics that would be involved. So they do have, you know, um, their amphibious you know, transport ships, their destroyers, their frigates, their corvettes. They have one carrier, which is a piece of garbage, in my opinion. A um, couple of mine countermeasure vehicles, some fast combat support, some replenishment ships. They got uh, you know, some other support ships, um, a handful of training ships. Um, a handful of, of auxiliaries. They've got one submarine support ship. They've got, uh, let's see, one, three, nine, ten uh, submarine rescue ship and um, submarine support ships. So they've got one big submarine support ships and about ten smaller ones that they can use. And um, so if the American fleet go, goes ahead and deploys the uh, submarine fleets forward and tax merchant ship, and that's going to force the Chinese to uh, lose the initiative in every single way. They're going to be forced to uh, defend their... They're going to be forced to go in convoy style like we did when we were supplying the British in World War II. And um, we won't if we're if the navy is intelligent they won't deploy the um carriers in the same way we use carriers actually as support vessels put them just outside the range of the reefs just barely within range of um enemy attack fighters so we can lure if with any luck lure um 
their fighters out into our uh, carrier groups and um, engage in air-to-air -air combat while we're close to the, our battleships and they're far away from their reefs. And we can use our carriers to resupply our submarine fleet and um, essentially force the Chinese to capitulate uh, based on the sole based essentially based because economically they won't be able to sustain themselves um you know we could pretty much sink their frigates at will um they have that one nuclear sub which i'm sure our subs are tracking as we speak um so i don't really have any fear of uh chinese being able to get off a nuclear strike against uh, the western united states so essentially, we have a free hand all the way from just outside the range of those artificial reefs uh, all the way, you know, through the Pacific Ocean and back to the uh, West Coast. And uh, if you want to take a look at some numbers here just uh, from uh, American submarines, and I'm not going to go into any great, excuse me, any great detail on this because... Uh, just because I'm an American and I prefer not to go into any, any greater detail than necessary and it's easily found. But 14 Ohio class, eight, uh, 18 Ohio class in commission. Those are some big bastards. They're for fucking real. Uh, shit you not. They're uh, ballistic missile um, carrying sub uh, submarines, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. So essentially you have a missile that goes up and it splits into six different parts and drops six different nukes in six different spots with you know a full complement of missiles on this nuclear powered submarine which doesn't need resupply very often you just don't need it i mean it, it powers itself almost indefinitely okay we got uh virginia class uh, those are your uh, fast attack submarines. There's 11 in commission, 5 uh, under construction, 2 on order. They're badass. Uh, the Sea Wolf, those attack submarines, those uh, essentially are uh, hunter killers, track and destroy. We've got uh, Los Angeles class attack submarines, 43 in commission, 2 in reserve. We've got, um, you know, 3 uh, Type 830 tugs, uh, 10. Um, 837s, um, 19 um, 832s. We've got um, two degaussing, uh, uh, deperming ships um, that are 911s, eight that are 912s. We've got cable laying submarines. Um, now, the Chinese have exactly the same cable laying submarines and uh, exactly the same uh, buoy tenders because thanks again to the Clintons and their infinite wisdom to sell Chinese our military technology, which uh, is neither here nor there. I consider it treason, but I guess for Washington's business as usual. But that's how you win the war in the South China Sea. Forward deployment of submarines attack merchant shipping. No air-to-air, -air, no bombing campaigns, no boots on the ground. It would be 100% naval, and eventually the Chinese would capitulate. So even the threat of it should be enough for them to think twice about it, even with their artificial reefs. And they should give that shit up because it threatens our Asian allies. I don't like to see pressure on Korea, South Korea. I don't like to see pressure on Vietnam. I don't like to see pressure on India. And they all have a bone to pick with China. So, Chinese often get a, ahead of themselves. They're essentially a third world country that just within the past 10 years stepped up to first world status. And they're, I consider them to be very backward in many ways. And they simply, they simply don't have the, um, the uh, naval traditions or the, the training that we have um, for that type of naval engagement in the United States. So that is war in the South China Sea. Um, I'm going to cover uh, 
challenges to the United States Army within uh, on domestic soil, but you know within civil. If there was a civil war in the United States, were challenges they're going to face, and uh, why war with Russia is impossible. Not only impossible, it's not only stupid, but it's impossible, and. Um, I'll explain why in in more segments. So if you want to see more, subscribe. If you disagree with the basic premise of my uh, tactical analysis, leave a comment, and I will attempt to address it the best I can. This has been Hank. Thanks a lot. Catch you guys later.